Good evening once again. I am on day 17 of doing these lives. Amazing. Uh, I'm actually quite surprised myself. Day 17. Pretty good. I'm actually going to pat myself in the back for uh, doing this. Whether I, uh, you know, I used to have a lot of apprehensions of doing these kind of things. And uh, that day, on day one, when I began, hi, uh, <laughs> Tashi. Uh, that day when I began, um, I was like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to commit to doing something like this? It's an entire book that I'm taking on. And uh, there was a voice in me just said, just do it. And uh, therefore, today, day 17, we're on chapter 16. And uh, the name of the chapter is The Spiritual Path. The spiritual path of non-resistance. Uh, very, very interesting. Again, every chapter is interesting. I'm actually, you know, um, losing out on words to describe the chapter. So maybe I'm not going to spend too much time today on describing that. Um, however, I will share with you Although I have been in this journey, the spiritual journey for over a decade now, it's going to be a little over a decade, but let, let's just say 10 years, 10 years uh, spiritual journey. Sometimes still there is this little thing that, uh, oh, if I call it a spiritual path, what will people think? And that's exactly, and I wasn't aware that, that this feeling or this thought was there still lingering until I read the title this morning, The Spiritual Path of Non-Resistance. Pura title sun ke, I was like, aray bap rahi, ye to bada, uh, you know, renounce karke, chhod chhaad ke chale jane wala type ka topic lag raha hai. And these kind of thoughts started coming inside me. And uh, I was like, uh, Okay, this is interesting. I've been doing this for 10 years now, this kind of work and this kind of journey, not work, but living uh, a life uh, on a daily basis, but with uh, a spiritual awareness, uh, not being unconscious, uh, becoming more conscious of my unconscious. Wow, that's a very interesting statement. Becoming conscious of my unconscious. Yes, so more and more I have been... Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I just... Uh, there are certain things my mind is bringing up as memories uh, of the past couple of days. Um with regard to somebody and it, this is why the smile just <laughs> popped up just now. Um, it's so fascinating, right? It's a parallel thing that's happening. I'm being so conscious uh, and so present to what I'm reading, what I'm sharing and everything. And I'm also aware of these memories and just boom, they just land up in front and uh, well, anyway, so I acknowledge that. I acknowledge the memory that came up. I acknowledge the experience uh, of the memories. And I now go back to saying what I was saying. So what I was saying is that when I read this title, I became aware that there is still something um, whose it is, whose voice is that, where have I picked that up? Sometimes it can be a collective consciousness and awareness uh, that you pick up from other people also. So I let that be. I let that be and I said, okay, let's now begin this jo topic hai aaj ka non-resistance ka. Let me observe if I am resisting even reading this on the, from the title itself. Spiritual path pe resistance a gaya. So it's like very fascinating here. Yeah? Uh, so here we go. Chapter 16, 
day 17 of excerpts from uh, the book The Untethered Soul by Michael A. Singer. One should view their spiritual work as learning to live life without stress, problems, fear or melodrama. You know what I did? I broke this sentence down in two parts. Uh, instead of making, there is a meaning of course in the whole of it. However, I also chose to break this sentence down in two parts and I'd like to share that. One should view their spiritual work as learning. And I paused there. I actually broke the sentence down over there. Okay, and uh, it's like, okay, there itself, if I look at that word learning, it takes away that whole um, resistance, well, not whole, but it took away the resistance or the charge that was coming up from the word spiritual path. It's a life of learning. I said, ah, okay, jamta hai. My mind also said, ha, ha, jamta hai, jamta hai. And, you know, there was no uh, blockage of energy flows. I said, very good, let's continue with this. So, one should view their spiritual work as learning, all right? And then the second half, adding to it, to live life without stress, problems, fear, or melodrama. Now, when this came up, I was like, ha ha, wah wah, uh, to live life without stress and without problems. There are problems coming up every other day for everybody. How am I supposed to uh, do that? And, I, and then I said, ha, ah, there's the resistance coming up, you know, already to read that. So I just became aware of that. I just witnessed that and uh, continued. Stress only happens when you resist life's events. So true, isn't it? Think about it. Stress only happens when you resist life's events. Just witnessing and experiencing the events of life taking place. If you, choose to live, if you choose to live this way, you will see that life can be lived in a state of peace. What an amazing process life is. This when I read, uh, again, I love to, I, act, I actually love to get as many perspectives as I can for as many things as I can. It's like increasing or widening my way of looking at things, my way of experiencing things, my way of um, viewing things, uh, feeling things, thinking about things, events, situations, people, everything. So it's like, you know, a holistic perspective as much as possible uh, is something I love to do. I spend a lot of time doing that. Uh, so this perspective was very beautiful. He says, what an amazing process life is. This flow of atoms through time and space. It's just an eternal sequence of events that take form and then instantly dissolve into the next moment. Really, an event that happens is just a flow of atoms through time and space that dissolve into the next moment. What creates that event as significant, significant or insignificant is the way we perceive it, it's the way we cling on to it or it's the way we let it go. Otherwise, they're just atoms floating in space not even time and space. I mean, time is a very human construct. But if you further expand your view towards it, you, they're just atoms floating in space. Event, word bhi hum insaan usko dete. And usko phir hum further branch out karte hain. Uh, happy events, sad events, troubling events, bothering events, problematic events, so on and so forth. Right? So, yeah flow of atoms through time that dissolve into the next moment. Please do write to me what you think about this perspective. If you resist this amazing force of life, tension builds within you and gets into your body, mind and spiritual heart. It is not difficult to... Uh, see the tendency towards stress and resistance 
in daily life. Why are we so resistant to just letting life be? Let's see what it is. He says, what is it inside of us? Please listen to this very, very carefully. It really blew me away. What is it that is inside of us that even has the ability to resist the reality of life? Through this entire book, we've been talking about the mind and the, you know, the thoughts and everything. So I was like, Achha, you know, uh, it's the mind that is causing the resistance and things like that. But he brings a little, again, a different perspective to the whole thing. So what is it that is within us that has the ability to resist the reality of life? If you look carefully inside yourself, you will see that it's you. But then he doesn't say the mind, he says the self. The indwelling being that has this power. And he says it is called willpower. And when I read that, I'm like, oh my God, I'm using my willpower to resist things. That's an interesting way to look at it, you know. So it's not like I'm believing everything that he says, okay. It's not like I have to buy in everything he says. But I'm open to receive it, chew on it, work on it, see how it works for me, if it works for me, if it doesn't, how it works, you know, experience the whole thing. So with that similar openness, I am willing to see, is it my willpower that I'm using to resist life itself okay so he says will is a real force that emanates from your being it is what makes your arms and legs move to many socha ke ha till i don't will it my arms and legs don't move they don't just move randomly by themselves the power of self when it is concentrated and directed into the physical mental or emotional realms creates a force and we call that force will. I'll read that again. Please listen. The power of self when it is concentrated and directed into the physical, mental or emotional realms creates a force and we call that force will. Try this exercise with me right now. Okay. Just take a deep breath and lift your finger. Okay. Now, when I said lift your finger, if you do that again, you'll be like, yeah, I lift my finger. What's the big deal? There, I'll do it again and again and again. But now tell yourself, don't lift your finger. What's happening? Just notice what's happening. I'm doing it right now. You will become aware of the energy inside of you going towards that finger because first you first we said lift it, lift it. It's so easy. The not doing, it's like you know, it's like ooh, you can feel that energy. I can feel the energy rushing into my finger to not lift it. Right? <laughs> so um, just try it and tell me. T tell me what you felt. The power of self when it is concentrated and directed into the physical, mental or emotional realms creates a force and we call that force will. You are not helpless in there. You have the power to affect things. We actually assert our will in opposition to the flow of life. Since, But since what we are resisting has already taken place, what good is it to resist? Such an important question, right? We get so caught up in the resistance in not accepting what has happened or disagreeing with what is being said or done that do we, can, can we take, can we please take the time out to really think what good is this resistance when something has already taken place? Okay. It does not do anything to the reality of the situation. So if someone's said something, what's the point of saying, he can't say this, he can't do it. Are like, Baba, kar diya, usne keh diya. Okay. What we're really resisting, now this, what we're really resisting is the experience of the event passing through us. 
we don't want it affecting us inside but it's already affected and we're pushing that out rather than letting it pass okay so what we're really resisting is the experience of the event passing through us not the event itself with the aya or gya events uh, atoms passing through dissolving into the next event that person came said whatever he or she had to and left here i am standing saying how could she say that how could she say that so i'm resisting by asking how could she say that what am i really resisting is how it has made me feel inside uh, about what she has said we don't want it affecting us inside the thing is we don't want to become aware of how it is affecting us inside it has already affected us it is stuck here and by asking how could she say that the mind is coming up with ways to block that going into us but through the book how we've been talking about is take that moment and when you hit that block when you when this comes up how could she say that how could he do that why why oh that why so we assert the force of will against the influence of the event in an attempt to stop it from passing through our heart and mind the experience of an event does not stop with our sensory observation it touches our mental and emotional pools energy pools creating movement in the energy like physical impact ripples through water you know and when he said when he when he gave this example of ripples in water okay i sat there visualizing imagining let's say imagining okay that i it's it's, it's a beautiful still lake uh, water body and i very gently very gently not even throwing very gently just dropped a small <clears throat> pebble or a small piece of rock into that bloop it just falls there and then i'm watching the ripples just you know spread circle circle circles bada 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 and they going now let's say uh you know i do the same experiment and i'm imagining all of this right i'm imagining taking a big let's say like a big uh thali ab usko english mein kya kehte hain big tray like a circular tray let's say okay and i drop something in it the same thing will happen the ripples will go till the end of the edge of the plate now let's say i take a tumbler which is open uh from the bottom and the top because i want to see what's happening right so i first place the tumbler in the center of that plate okay the water is still there everywhere the water is in the middle of the tumbler also and it's outside also and then i drop uh that same little piece of pebble okay that is my way of stopping the ripples from going all the way out on its own naturally till the edge of the plate so what is going to happen it's the ripples aren't going to stop the ripples will be there but the ripples are now going to get concentrated and stuck in that tumbler ka circumference because i have forcefully stopped it instead of allowing it to flow out in its natural way and that that imagination uh you know is exactly what he talks about here he says these movements pass through the psyche much like the physical impact ripples through water okay amazingly you actually have the ability to resist these movements of energy the assertion this is where he talks about the assertion of will power can stop the energy transfer the tumbler is like the assertion of my will power i will fully put that tumbler there same way thing about right? that the ripples will be there but you know that the it will be so much just utni jagah mein tight but they will be there so concentrated so tight you can wear yourself out struggling with the experience of a single event or even a single thought or emotion and you know that all too well we've all experienced that eventually you'll see that this resistance 
is a tremendous waste of energy. The fact is, you're generally using your will to resist one of two things. That which has already happened or that which hasn't happened yet. You are sitting inside resisting impressions from the past or thoughts about the future. Think of how much energy is wasted resisting what has already happened. Since the event has already passed, you are actually struggling with yourself, not with the event. In addition, contemplate how much energy is wasted resisting what might happen. Since most of the things you think might happen never do, you are just throwing your energy away. How you deal with your energy flow has a major effect on your life. When you resist, the energy has no place to go. It blocks your heart energy flow. This is the human predicament, he says. Events have happened. We continue to hold their energy inside of us. And now, when we face today's events, we are neither prepared to receive them nor capable of digesting them. Over time, a person becomes so blocked that they either blow up or shut down completely. This is what it means to get stressed out or even totally burned out. It is not life's events that are causing problems or stress. It is your resistance to life's events that is causing this experience. The solution? Stop resisting. And the moment I read that, again, tung, ha, so easy for him to say. <laughs> Stop resisting. Okay? Um, if you're going to resist, at least have some rational basis for resisting. Okay? That made sense. Okay? Now, I'm asking you a question. I made one statement. I turned it into a question because I wanted to ask myself and now I'm sharing it with you. Are you willing to examine the process of resistance? I'm pausing intentionally. So that you and I both can become aware Uh, just a moment, people. My phone battery is again, again in trouble, and I'm really hoping that the phone doesn't die out. In case it does, please know that I will um, come back online again after a few minutes once it, the charging happens a little more. This is what happened yesterday also. Sudha, so you are answering the question you are willing to examine the process of re resistance? Beautiful. Wonderful, so am I. So now I'll convert that question to what he's written. Be willing to examine the process of resistance. Plenty of events make it right through you. Lovely, lovely thing he's given here. Plenty of events make it right through you. Why did you decide to resist this one? Something inside of you must have a basis for deciding when to simply let things pass through and when to assert willpower to either push them away or cling to them. Okay, like he gives a he gives a very simple but very beautiful example. He says when we are driving or when we are in a car, we see the white lines on the road, right? We just see them. We let them I mean we we notice them, but it's like such a such a fleeting thought that we don't even pay attention to it, okay? So often we don't even pay attention while we're overtaking white line, straight line hair or if it's a broken thing that means we can, we can we just, you know, random. Sometimes we don't even notice on certain roads white lines hain ya nahi hai, okay? So we're just letting that piece of information pass through. But then he gives, an, he elaborates further, he says, but what about the person whose job it is to paint those white lines? Okay. Look at his thing. 
how focused is he going to be to ensure that those white lines are being painted exactly precisely perfectly straight and all of that and if he messes up and if he doesn't do a good job if they're not straight uh you know that can be stress for him isn't it he may even avoid wanting to go back on that road because wo ho gaya ho gaya now he's not you know can't do much about it if there is some whatever just just an example so not all of us resist the same things or have the same issues okay it's because we don't all have the same preconceived notions of how things should be or how much they should matter to us if you want to understand understand stress begin by realizing that you carry around with you your own set of preconceived notions of how things should be how common does that happen in relationships i think this is how things should be somebody else thinks that that they that this is how things should be so in any kind of relationship i'm not talking about you know partnership relationships and marriage or whatever any kind of relationship it's the preconceived notions of how things should be and how much that matters to us and wahan se kitne problems and i'm using the word problems here because it will come to will come to that later aa sakte hain relationships so if you want to understand stress begin by realizing that you carry around with you your own set of preconceived notions of how things should be these personal events that take place in our lives leave impressions on our minds and heart i'm so sorry they leave impressions on our minds and hearts those become the basis for asserting our will to either resist or cling based on these past impressions you are resisting the current events that are taking place when i was reading this earlier today it was really hilarious how i mean what, not how what kind of an example came to mind okay and i want to share that with you because i made a note over here with two exclamation marks and a smiley under it it's about biryani okay whether you're vegetarian or not but you can imagine this you can you can convert the biryani dish to some other dish okay now in hyderabad hyderabad is is like famous for biryani okay and then there are families traditional families who make biryani at home so for them they value their their home cooked biryani so much you know the family uh, recipe and things like that which is fascinating and it is mind blowing delicious okay but then there are so many restaurants also now opened up here, you know in 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 everywhere but i'm saying in hyderabad particularly biryani 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 everywhere i'm the kind of person who loves to enjoy tasting different uh, biryanis from different places okay so when i bring home a uh, a biryani from a particular restaurant i am not comparing it from any other place i am just so present enjoying that okay and with becoming aware of that i remember certain people when they're also doing this ha theek hi che kuch khaas nahi hai and then all those things will come out okay masala nahi hai aur mirchi bahut hai aur it's to this to that i make it better than this or you know so and so aunty ke ghar ka khana ye wali biryani this restaurant is not good you should have this entire conversation while the person is eating the biryani that i've got from this place and i found that really 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 hilarious that this this example came up that you you're so caught up with the past impressions past you know experiences of that biryani idhar ki udhar ki udhar ki that you're not even you're resisting enjoying this biryani if you're not liking it don't eat it it's as simple as that we have that choice right don't eat it this creates inner tension turmoil struggle and suffering not about the biryani but what he is saying is 
that based on these past impressions, you are resisting the current events that are taking place and this creates inner tension, turmoil, struggle and suffering. What is the alternative? In order to do this, uh, sorry, the alternative is to let go of these impressions. Carefully watch the mental voice. It will say, it will tell you something, I don't like it. Okay, all right. It will say, go fix it. It will give you advice how to fix it. Okay. Why do you, uh, he says, let whatever happens, make it through you rather than carrying it into the next moment. And on this, something else popped up very interesting that uh, not just about becoming aware, uh, sometimes, maybe many times, maybe often times, we don't end up saying no to somebody because somewhere your mind or heart tells you, but if I say no, then that person will not like it, then that person will ask me why, why not, this, that, it's going to get an, get into an argument and I don't want to get into an argument, I don't like that feeling of argument, so I'm not even going to begin that whole thing, I might as well just do it and over with it. And I'm like, oh my God, just to not want to feel that discomfort of what that person might ask or might say or has done this before and you know for sure that this person is going to do it again, you are not standing up for yourself and saying, no, I don't want to do this or no, I don't want to go out today. So, let whatever happens make it through you rather than carrying it into the next moment. That doesn't mean you don't deal with what happens. Please listen to this very, very carefully. This, it doesn't mean that you don't we deal with what happens. Okay? Deal with it, he says. But first, let the energy make it through. Okay? And he's explaining. If you don't, you will not actually be dealing with the current event. You will be dealing with your own blocked energies from the past. And that's what we call them as triggers sometimes. It's, it'll be such a tiny thing, but... You won't even realize, boom, there's so much that's coming out. Where did that come out from? Later on, if you're introspecting and then if you introspect. Otherwise, sometimes we just, you know, in that in that simple conversation, somebody has comes and says, ah, shall we do this? And then that person, whoa, whoa, back off, man. Why are you getting so hassled about it? I just asked, shall we do this? And if that further triggers you, even more outbursts or you suddenly just go into this silence. There's so many things, right? So you're reacting from blocked energies of the past. You're not dealing with it uh, as to what that person said. If an event takes place and is able to make it through your psyche, you will be left face to face with the actual situation as it truly exists. Since you are dealing with the actual event, Rather than stored energy stimulated by the event, you won't assert reactive energy from your past. You will find that you're able to deal with daily situations much better. Events are not problems, they're just events. How many times do people ask us, what's your problem? What's your problem? What's your problem? The tone may be different, but the word problem is being used. I thought about it. What if, you know, when I'm asking somebody, what's your problem? Nicely, genuinely, I want to know. But why am I even using the word problem? That means there's something that I am not accepting, that I am resisting something inside and I'm converting it into the problem, whether that person has even used the word problem or not. I'm like, wow. Your resistance to them is what causes the problem. But again, don't think that because you accept reality, it means you don't deal with things. You do. You will be surprised to find that in most situations, there's nothing to deal with except for your own fears and desires. Fear and desire make everything seem complicated. I'm going to read that line again. You will be surprised to find that in most situations there's nothing to deal with except for your own fears and desires. 
fear and desire make everything seem complicated. Simply enjoying the life, experience of life of no problems. It's all about no problems, no tension, no stress and no burnout. Be conscious in the presence of whatever takes place without building up blocked energies. Uh, it is up to you now, your, sorry, just a moment, I seem to have missed something. He says, yeah, he says, stop and think about what you're capable of achieving. Up to now, your capacities have been constrained by constant inner struggles. Imagine what would happen if your awareness were f was free to focus only on the events actually taking place. Your capabilities would be exponential compared to what you've ever experienced. If you could bring this level of awareness and clarity to everything you do, your life would change. Relationships are a great way to work with yourself. Imagine if you used, this is so beautiful the way he's put it, Imagine if you used relationships to get to know other people rather than to satisfy what is blocked inside of you. It's so beautiful. Imagine if you used relationships to get to know other people, not to satisfy what is blocked inside of you. If you're not trying to make people fit into your preconceived notions of what you like and dislike, you will find that relationships are not really that difficult. If you're not so busy judging and resisting people based upon what is blocked inside of you, you will find that they are much easier to get along. And so are you. Once the personal energies pass through you, people and events will appear different to you. You will realize that you have talents and abilities you never saw before. Your whole view of life will change. The way to work with resistance, he says, is by relaxing. Relaxing doesn't mean go on to the beach and relax while I relax. But he says when you, when you sense the tension building up, just relax your muscles, relax yourself, relax the breathing, relax the energy flow through your personal resistance. Just relax through that resistance. This process of relaxing is beneficial to everything in life. It directly addresses how to keep your heart open, the most important. If you have difficulty doing this, don't be hard on yourself. Just keep working with this. It is the work of a lifetime. And this is where tremendous spiritual growth comes in. It's not something that will happen just like that. Start with small things. Start with, you know, and, and be okay with yourself. Be easy on yourself while doing this. Know that you're going to be working with a resistance. So if somebody's, imagine if somebody's pushing you hard, okay? You either have a choice, you have some choices. You push back or you move out of the way so that person will just go off. Or you, so, so here's the thing, right? I'm giving this example. There's somebody pushing and you're standing here. So you're exerting a lot of pressure to keep this person here. You're pushing back. Or you can push harder and push this and back, number one. If this person is pushing, you can just slip away and this person can just, you know, go away. Or this energy can go away. Or when this person or this thing is pushing, what you do is go with that, go with that go with that and at some point this is going to reduce its pressure it will and that's when it's the atoms fade away into the next event we can try all these things there's nothing none of these are the right thing to do and none of you know none of them are the wrong thing to do sare karo work it out figure it out but what i'm saying is check what this resistance is check what is that resistance inside right that's what michael and i are um, <clears throat> talking about <clears throat> this tremendous spiritual growth and you will feel more you will feel much more love than you've ever felt before for yourself and for others you will feel more peace and contentment 
And then such a beautiful thing he says, life is giving you a gift and that gift is the flow of events. The only reason they're not, they don't seem like their gift is because we resist. And he says, what used to look like stressful problems will begin to look like stepping stones on your path of spiritual growth, on your path of spiritual, uh, spiritual path of non-resistance. And that brings us to the end of yet another chapter, chapter 16. Please do leave your comments of what you thought of today's and, uh, and the rest of them. Share with me, please. I look forward to reading how it has been going for you. Uh, have you been able to practice? What are the things that are coming up for you? I would really love to read. I am enjoying so much sharing uh, with you. So thank you for coming in. Thank you for joining. Thank you for watching later. Avril, you have been watching and commenting. and I'm so grateful for that. So thank you. So that you have been joining so often. Geeta, you've been joining. You know, Tashi's been coming in and going. So many people, so many people come. You know, I'll tell you something. I, every day before I start, I set out an intention in the morning that for whoever requires to hear this today, I send out an invitation to them. So it's not about how many people are joining or how many are viewing regularly. That's not for me. My thing is just whoever requires to hear this today, may you receive this invitation and may you receive some message from this for you. So until tomorrow, 9 p.m. Indian Standard Time, take care of yourself. Good night. Love you. Thank you.